Greetings again, Hobby Gras. Check it out. Um, got my Forge World order in today, which I'm really, really happy about. Uh, I ordered this on the 8th of August, and it is now the 15th, so I got it in uh, seven days, which is really, really fast for Forge World. The guys over there in, uh, in uh, Nottingham are definitely knocking it out of the park. Um, so what I ordered was a Space Marine Zyphon Interceptor. Um, this is a really, really great aircraft. I was puzzling out my list the other day with a friend, and when we were sitting there talking about using repulsors with the twin, with the twin LAS and everything else like that, figured out for the same for the same points cost of dropping a twin twin LAS off of the um, off of one of the repulsors and taking the twin the twin bolt heavy bolter instead. I had enough points to pick up one of these with this with the basic uh, the basic layout. So basically, this is a interceptor. For anybody who hasn't worked with a Forge World model before, their uh, their instructions are a little odd. They come with a component list. Each one of your pieces are identified, and then basically the instructions don't really give you a step by step. It kind of just throws it on here and says, "Hey, this is you know this is what it's going to look like when you're done." And then it gives you the options here. You know, this is what it's all going to look like. There's the bottom with the, the feet up, bottom with the feet down. Unlike GW plastic kits, um, it'll actually come with different pieces for both the feet up and feet down. I will model mine with the feet up because I want mine to be flying. So I'll go ahead and unbox this thing here. I did pop it open earlier just to kind of take a look because I'm a I'm a I'm a fanboy. So now Forge World sends these instructions for dealing with resin kits. Pretty much. The basic hobby tools, razor saw, a, the coping saw or a jeweler saw, clippers, super glues, never use plastic glue, never ever use plastic glue with resin, uh, tweezers, sculpting tools, modeling knife, pen vise, and files. And then it basically goes through the basics of teaching you how to uh, how to work with it. This is relatively new. I've gotten a lot of Forge I own a lot of Forge World. Uh, my Ultramarines 30K Army has three, four, this makes five. Forge World vehicles and the whole thing, plus I have a couple other kits that have more resin parts from Forge World. And unlike others, they're shipping out in boxes that are wrapped, and everything's wrapped in bubble wrap to protect the stuff that's on the inside. And I'm going to take everything out of the box because I'm going to show you guys what this looks like. Basic, standard flying base, good times, because God knows we all need another one of those. And I'm going to pop open the ultra special. Forge World Ziploc bag and start pulling out the big pieces. Start pulling out the pieces. For anybody who's worked with Forge World before, you'll know that Forge World can be a little bit wonky because sometimes you'll get stuff that's in this. When you get stuff in that's just a little bit, um, in this case, broken. So you can see there, the actual the ejection points on these things are quite large, and so instead of breaking evenly across the wing. It broke at an angle, which is not good and really sucks, but um, it's towards the back of the plane. It may not even be noticeable. And, that's, and they ship with these big honking, big chunks of flash. And those are basically injection points. And then you get the bag of the small stuff. I'll go through the small stuff here in a minute. So basically when they inject, when they mold these things, it's not like an injection molding process. This is actually a, more like a, um, a push molding process. So I have a rubber mold with, that they've set up and built, and it's usually out of silicone. What they do is they pour liquefied resin, which is cold cast. So they push liquid resin in there, and they basically use this thing to push it in there. What it does is it presses down on it and press, and there's holes in the back so all the, all the air comes out. And so it pushes it down in there. Well, in order to get enough plastic material in there, they have to have these wide entry points, and that's what this is. But when they um, when they set these things up for you to model with them, move this one out of the way. You can use the discoloration of my palette. This is what I'm going to show you. And you see here that this piece is really, really, really wide. So what I will literally do is I'll take and say like that. I'll use a razor saw to cut this way. I'll cut this part off first so I don't have as much to deal with, but then I'll use a razor saw to cut it down. It's a basic forge roll operating, yeah, you know, basic stuff that you use for working with forge roll. 
So, ew. Um, so this is one of the engine mounts, I'm assuming, that's, that's the bottom. And the wings f slant downward like that. So here's this one, I mean, you can see how the wing back here is, is complete. And then when you look at the other one, in foot down. Um, that's the front. Let me see. That no, we can't get it to put it. In. I can't put it together in there because there's this little chunk of. You can see it in there. There's like a. That's an air point. There's an air pocket. There's a little bridge part right there that kind of pushes the air out. I have to trim those off before I can put it in there. But it's going to be towards the back, and it should be right up against the engines. Um, look at the instructions here again. It'll show the full thing assembled. Assembled. It's going to be noticeable. So I'm going to lodge a complaint with Forge World because this should have been packed a little bit better where this piece didn't get broken. Um, I may be able to salvage it. You know, I can hear this piece right here, so you can tell that's going to, you have to take a file and do that. So before this thing is even close to being put together, I will have to wash it in warm soapy water just to get it all clean. Um, before I do that, though, I will separate all these pieces because if you don't, wash it after you do all this cutting then what winds up happening is you get the resin the residue from doing all the sawing and stuff all over the model and it really makes it a pain to uh, to paint it when the primer won't stick you have to use, I use polyurethane acrylic primer um, but the polyurethane acrylic primer yes yeah, it's not a very big piece that broke off I might be able to take a jeweler saw and cut that and get it off of there and use that to patch this piece up. You see it's literally just right there. It's not that big of a piece. So I might be able to fix that. Not too big of a deal. I'm horrible with green stuff so it'll have to be a, it'll have to be a good super glue job and then I'll use green stuff to fill up any cracks and then I'll sand it make sure it's all nice and flat. So. If it doesn't work, I'll call. I'll shoot Forge World an email and let them know that a piece is broken. They'll they'll ship me on another one. So those are the big pieces. Bag down here and there, and then of course the other bag of stuff. This is the small pieces, and a lot of the Forge World kits don't come with a lot of pieces. I mean, they try to. They really don't want to put a lot of fidgety, little bitty fog. Resin for them is really hard. It's not only safe for them, but for anybody, it's going to be really hard to get a lot of really small, intricate detail because resin isn't forgiving, as forgiving as plastic. It's brittle. So it will break. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts. It will break. So standard space marine canopy, which I will. Um, I've got this new vinyl masking tape, so I will actually tape the whole thing off, and so I could paint. I, I'll, cover the inside and then I'll tape off this whole thing use my exacto knife to cut out the, the windows and then I'll spray that in the primer and then I will turn around and spray it again with my base coat and then I will highlight it and once it's all done and I've matte varnished it I will peel the tape off I might do a tutorial on how to mask off these kind of things uh, engine pieces again really big ejection points injection points the little can't really see them point with the these so in here, there's these little legs that if you forget to cut those off and you go to put this thing together, it will cause things to go bad. And resin sticks really quickly to, uh, to with super glue. So there's feet down, feet up. I have never understood modeling something with the feet down. Um, Storm Ravens, I can understand because they went back in 6th edition, they would hover, they were skimmers, etc., etc. There's our top piece, our top aileron. So it's really nice. Again, it's got a big chunky piece right there. So I will I won't ever cut this with the with the pair of clippers. I will actually cut it back here with a pair of clippers, but I'll cut that right there with the razor saw. And I use a forge roll, uh, not a forge roll, but a uh, an exacto razor saw. It's a the Games Workshop one's a little bit thicker, so I use this because it's got a finer cut.
And then if I need something to do big bolt cuts, I have a, a coping saw. So there's that. Here's the missile pod for the bottom. Um, and then there's the, the twin LAS. And, and with these, it's actually really nice because the looks like the barrels are molded together. So the barrels are molded together. And these go... Oh, those, goes in, those go into the fuselage. That's really cool. So these are molded together. So you can see, you know, look here, they're pretty straight. I mean, most resin you work with forge rolled, these things are going to be bent. You have to warm them, and you have to put them in some warm water to get them all pliable, bring them back out straight, and then basically hit it with a hair dryer, dry them off, and that makes the plastic go back, but it does make it more brittle. It's got a, um, a Tech Marine pilot, or it's just a Space Marine. Uh, no, it's a Tech Marine pilot. It's got a Tech Marine pilot. Tech Marine shoulder pad there. Probably for the shoulder pads, I will probably use regular plastic, only because um, I haven't really had much luck getting these things cut off without them breaking. So I'll probably just use regular Space Marine shoulder pads um, to put those on there. And, you know, the the arms and then the Tech Marine. Um, I like how it's got the knotted knob in there, so you don't you can get it right on where it needs to go. I will paint him more than likely. I will paint him separate from everything else because he'll be red. And everything else so it's going to be blue to go with my ultramarines engine pieces you see in here you know this stuff's got really i mean resin takes so much detail so well that it's not even funny it's got you know nice little detail to it so i mean all in all this is not a, not a difficult kit so I'm, I'm gonna have a good time definitely not as difficult as putting together a spartan um which i've done two of and those were a pain because not only do you have to end up sanding the whole thing but there's a lot of work involved with getting everything getting everything together so these will go into my spare bits kit i'll probably wind up using them on a base somewhere that's the missile pod for the bottom so all in all i'm pretty excited um this is going to add the only flyer i have for my ultramarines army uh, well technically the propulsors are flyers but i don't really consider them to be flyers because they don't look like planes they look like floating land raiders <clears throat> and that'll give me a little air it's an air superiority fighter it's got the rules for which you need the uh, Imperial armor, uh, the Imperial armor book for the Space Marines in order to play this in 40k. If you're playing 30k, it's right in that. It's in the red. It's in the red um, Legions of Stardust book, and it can be taken by Loyalist and Traitor. But for 30k or 40k, you need to have the Index of Stardust book from Forge World, which I have, and it's got rules for all the different tanks and things that you can buy from Forge World and where they fall inside the Force Org for a game of 40k. So, um, well that's it. That's my uh, that's my uh, my unboxing and I think the next thing I'm going to do, I have no idea what I'm going to do next. So, just pay, keep watching uh, and I will uh, be back soon.